Janelle Monet here. And I am your special guest substitute. Are all votes created equal? In America, some votes are actually worth more than others, depending on where you live. In order to find out why, you have to understand a controversial political strategy. Hey everyone, I'm Kat Shea. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I teach history in Los Angeles, California. And today, we're going to study gerrymandering. Joining me to help teach this lesson, we have a very exciting guest, Janelle Monet. Hi! You know, I'm just trying to stay safe. I'm trying to uh, shower. Yeah. How have you been holding up? I'm good. Just trying to shower, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Got to ask, what is one of the revelations that you've learned about yourself during this time? Oh, my goodness. I wish I had something profound. But I think I learned that time is indeed a social construct. My Saturdays are my Mondays. My Fridays are my Sunday mornings. That is amazing. Now, our last lesson, which you can check out anytime here on YouTube, focused on the Electoral College. We're going to go a little more in depth on another controversial aspect of our electoral process. Today, I'm taking over your lesson on gerrymandering. So I know this isn't a math lesson, but I'm going to start you off with a number. 435. Politically, our country is divided into 435 sections, which are known as congressional districts. Each district has a roughly equal number of people living in it, and each district gets to select one member of the House of Representatives. The borders of these congressional districts change as their populations grow or shrink, and this is called redistricting. And it's not necessarily bad. It happens every few years in almost every state. Let's see how redistricting works using Texas as an example. As district borders change, there are a few criteria that states are supposed to keep in mind. For example, districts should be compact. They should also be contiguous, meaning the entire district is connected. But there's one criteria that's usually held above all others. Around the same number of people should live in every district. So. Who's in charge of redrawing the lines when redistricting has to occur? There are three answers to this. Number one, seven states have actually never had congressional redistricting because there's only one district in the entire state. Number two, another handful of states have an independent or bipartisan commission to redraw the boundaries. And here's the third and the most popular. In the majority of our states, the state legislature, otherwise known as the state version of Congress, has most or all of the control. This is where the flaw in the system comes in. Whichever political party has the majority in the state legislature can redraw district lines. <laughs> and as you're about to see, this party can maximize the number of districts it can win. This is called gerrymandering. Where did this strange term come from? Some guy named Jerry? Actually, kind of did. This is Elbridge Gary the former governor of Massachusetts. In 1812, he changed the boundaries of a congressional district to benefit his party. A local newspaper compared the odd shape of the district to a salamander. It was nicknamed the gerrymander. At some point, the pronunciation changed from gerrymander to gerrymander, but the practice itself has changed very little over the past two centuries. Modern congressional districts have taken very similarly abstract shapes such as Maryland's 3rd District, otherwise known as the Praying Mantis, Ohio's 9th District, the Snake by the Lake, or Pennsylvania's 7th District, known as Goofy Kicking Donald Duck. Janelle, you know what that means. Drama Club. For my dramatic monologue, I will be reading a selection from the 1812 editorial from the Boston Gazette. The Gary Mender. Again, behold and shudder at the exhibition of this terrific dragon brought forth to devour and swallow your liberties and equal rights. Unholy party spirit and inordinate love of power gave it birth. Your patriotism and hatred of tyranny must, by one vigorous struggle, strangle it in its infancy. And sing. 
What? What? Now that we've talked about what gerrymandering means, I want to tell you why this issue is so important to me. Gerrymandering isn't just a partisan issue, it's often a racial issue, and one of the many ways people of color are disenfranchised. I was a victim of gerrymandering. In my district, my area, it switched before the election to a new renaissance, and then after the election, it went back to Fulton County. It was devastating, it was crushing. I know it's happened to many of you. We show up, black women show up, but there are things like this, voter disenfranchisement, gerrymandering, that will happen that will stop us from being able to, to vote for the person we want to vote for. In a recent study, around one in five African Americans and one in seven Latinx voters have said they experienced racial discrimination while trying to vote or participate in politics. And to really go beyond the racial discrimination, there's also prison gerrymandering. Prison gerrymandering means that prison populations count in the census and for purposes of redistricting, here's the catch. Prisoners can't vote. And in most states, those formerly incarcerated can't either, which skews the numbers even more. Think about how so many people have been told to use their voice and literally can't. Beyond that, now we know why this issue is so important. We're going to show you how the practice of gerrymandering really works. For this demo, we're going to think about a fictional state. And this state is going to be made out of pizza. I was hungry. This is where everyone lives in my state, Chanelaware. Every single topping represents a voter in one of the two political parties, the pepperoni party and the olive party. There are an equal number of members of each party, 18 pepperoni, 18 olive. We're going to turn Janelaware into four congressional districts and run an election. Let's start with the most logical setup for our voting districts. They are as compact as possible, four squares, of nine voters each. In this example, the Pepperoni Party and the Olive Party would each win two districts. It's the most fair way the borders can be drawn. But now, let's look at what would happen if Janelaware were gerrymandered. What if the Olive Party control the state legislature? As we can see, the Olive Party has redrawn the lines in a way that benefits them. Remember, we didn't change where the voters live, just where the district boundaries are. So in this scenario, Pepperoni wins one district by a landslide, but the Olive Party wins all three of these districts. That means the Olive Party gets an extra seat in Congress and more votes for Olive-friendly policies. This tactic is called packing because they pack the opposition party voters into one district. Let's check out one final scenario. This time, the Pepperoni Party takes control of the state legislature and draws the boundaries to their advantage. The Olives only win this one district with the pepperoni picking up the other three. So instead of packing, this tactic is called cracking with a C because the pepperoni has broken up the Olives across the state, cracking their influence. You get it? Packing and cracking both have the same end result, minimizing the opposing party's representation in Congress and gaining a political advantage. Now that we've seen gerrymandering in action through Janelaware, let's go back to the question we asked at the very beginning. Are all votes created equal? And in congressional elections, I'll just tell it to you. The answer is not always. There's a name for this, the wasted vote effect. And the more wasted votes there are, the less truly representative our democracy is. So if gerrymandering exists, then why don't people just move? Well, a lot of people live where they live because that's where their friends and families are. That's where their job is. That's the place they feel included and welcomed. And here's the last. A lot of people don't even know they live in a gerrymandered district. All in all, it's not a matter of want to, but rather a matter of able to. Our government is supposed to be by the people, for the people. But when partisan gerrymandering takes place, some of those people are left out of the process entirely. 
If nothing else, I hope this can be a reminder to stay engaged in state and local politics. Contacting your representative regarding an issue you care about. Getting out the vote in your community or volunteering for a campaign. And of course, when you're old enough, you've got to vote. Politics are so important. And if you want to learn more, check out my lesson about the Electoral College. If you want to contribute to an amazing cause, click the donate button to give to Project Isaiah, a new initiative designed to tackle hunger-related challenges brought on by the COVID-19 crisis. You can visit Isaiah.org for more information. It's time to take a break from class, but make sure you hit the subscribe button before you go. That way you'll never miss an episode of Celebrity Substitute, only on YouTube.